What's going on guys? I'm going to do a quick review of the last two days. Um, I did a review class yesterday and it got recorded, but the guy who recorded never responded. So um, yeah, this is not financial advice. Nothing is just financial advice, but um, yeah. So anyways, let's go back in the replay mode, okay? Um, this is going to be from yesterday, yesterday, okay? So when I woke up yesterday, it was before FOMC, I was not planning on trading. However, I did know, I did know the bias, okay? How do I know the bias? Well, the bias is determined by you have to you have to look at the higher time frame. So in this case, it's the one hour. You have to look: are we bouncing out of, of a fair bag gap? Are we rejecting a fair bag gap? Okay. If you ever see us bouncing off of a fair bag gap, okay, the high that we made before on the leg down to that fair bag gap, that should be your high. That should be your target, which is the draw on liquidity. And then, obviously, in the higher time frame, this is going to be the high that was made before this fair value gap, right? So this would be your target, and then this would be your target for runners. So in this in this, in this this situation here, I woke up, and even though I was not planning on trading, I was like, okay, the bias is probably bullish. Why do I think that? It's because we're bouncing off a of fair value gap here, right? So when I see us bouncing off a fair value gap here, I know that the for as long as we hold it, the draw on liquidity will be up. So you go to, like, the one-minute time frame, okay? That was kind of my uh, thought process. Okay, so this was at 5:30 a.m. I'm just gonna play this a little bit. <coughs> okay, look, look right here. Okay, we have a fair value gap right here. See how only like some of this gets rebalanced. Okay, so when when only some of this gets rebalanced. Okay, that is that is I do keep them on a the screen because that could possibly mean what? That could possibly mean we could go back lower below this low and induce. Which basically means inducement basically means we we kind of go under low inside of the fair value gap and still bounce out of the lower part of the fair value gap. So I kept this on my screen, okay? So if we play this, we end up making another low at it, okay? And then what happens? I had this target marked up here, and I have a target marked up here. And these are the overnight highs, okay? So ideally, my draw right now is on these overnight highs. We have another five minute, we have another volume balance here, another fair value gap here. Okay, and I would not mind, I'm not going to slap these blindly, but I would not mind taking like a confirmation setup off of these, okay? So, if I just play price action, let's see what happens. Okay, so now that we hit, okay, now that we hit internal, we did not hit the over and the high at, now that we hit internal, okay, um, I know it's FOMC, so I'm not... If I do end up trading this, it's all going to be demo. Okay, I'm not trading my live funds until after. I see we bounce off this little bit, but if you go to like the three minute, okay, you can see this is kind of like another fair value gap. So um, I'm just kind of watching here. Okay, is there any confirmation setup here? What a confirmation setup would basically mean like a, a second fair value gap. Nope. Okay, and I kind of noticed this. There's still no fair value gap here. Okay, rejecting this fair value gap. Still no confirmation setup, okay? Still no confirmation setup. I understand now we have this low down here, okay? So I wouldn't mind getting a confirmation setup off of there. Okay, we end up hitting, we get close to these lows, we don't end up hitting them, okay? And then what happens? It was right here. And by the way, the stuff I'm telling you now, right here, okay? This very bad gap right here. When I see us kind of, when I see us, okay, you can consider this a, a market structure shift. Okay, why? Because we we took out this low right here that was creating this very bad gap. And you can see like for the volume we had at this moment, this was a good market structure shift. Okay, so like at this time, I know that we still have this leftover high up here. Okay, and again, one of the things you should take out of this, this video is a lot of times when we have a leftover high up here that we get close to hit and we never hit it, okay, we end up going to hit it later. Okay, and this what I'm gonna about this video is not gonna be as long as it was in my class, okay? I, I can't make it as long as that was like a one and a half hour class, so everything I talked about that and it's not gonna go that long. Okay, but like right here, I would totally long this if we got it. Why? Because Again, we this is a for the volume we have, this is a good market structure shift. So as you can see, if you long this, which I did long this, I did alert this on my Discord, I did say I'm longing this, and keep in mind this was the demo. This was my target, and then the final target was up here. Okay, or the final target could be these equal highs, okay? Obviously the final target would not be this, the final target would be this, but I'd probably be out most here because 
when we have equal highs before a, a high high, sometimes you reverse, don't hit the high, come back down, then hit the high. Okay, and then this is market open. So market open, I was like, okay, I know we have equal lows under here. I'm gonna mark this for a value gap because I most of this is still in balance. And I said I'm not long in this for a value gap. I said maybe I'll look for a confirmation long off it. Okay, now look. If I extend this, do we ever get a candle close under the actual fair value gap? We do not, okay? We do not, we close to it, to the tick. Okay, so at this point, I also see these equal highs. So again, I'm bullish here still because again, on the hourly time frame, we have to realize we are still holding this fair value gap. So we know the bias should be up, okay? Now, now here, right here, we have these equal highs above here. I longed here and I learned it. I said I'm long here. I ended up selling for like two points. And the reason I did that is because if you look at these candles on a day before FOMC, do you see how these candles look like they could be a lot? Okay, these are really four points. This is four points, this move. Okay, that's nothing. So I kind of get out. I'm like, okay, I don't want to get chopped up, but I bet we're going to hit these equal highs. Now look what happened. Okay, I logged again in this candle. And this was demo, keep in mind. What was wrong with me logging in this candle? Okay, the only reason I lied is because I'm like, I bet we're going to burst to these equal highs. And I, I bet you on any normal day, we would have burst to these equal highs right then and right there. Okay, but why do I preach selling internal liquidity so much? Because of this. Okay, I know we have these equal highs up here, but do you see how obvious this high is? Okay, if you ever see like a, a very obvious high before equal highs before, it, it's still good to sell or to take some off at the high. So I end up getting stopped again. And... After this, I was not changing my bias yet. I was still long bias because I still know I still knew we kind of bounce off the um, the one hour free value gap. So again, if we if you see us bouncing off a higher time free value gap and we've not hit the high yet, you know you should know where the draw is. So that was kind of my reasoning for the draw being up here. Um, so that worked out nice. Okay, and then what happens? This is just a bunch of chop. We bounce off this volume and balance. We end up. Going back through the volume and balance, you can just see how bad this is to trade. At this point, I stopped taking anything. I didn't even, I, the whole time, I think I took three executions as a whole thing. I only took longs because of this. I'm never going to show where these equal highs above here. I also did, okay, you also got to keep in mind there were equal lows here. What do I say about three equal lows forming? Okay, we always coming back to hit them. Okay, look what happens. We burst through these highs, we never hit these equal lows. I think we burst through these highs again, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we burst through these highs. At this point, I'm like, okay, I'm keeping these on my screen just in case because I bet you will come back down and hit them. At this point, we're only like 15 points above. And I knew it was FOMC. So with FOMC, you know that we, we will sweep both lows and highs later, okay? Now look at this. Now that we've hit high of day, okay, would you long this for a value gap? Absolutely not, okay? What I look for is a break under, then a retest because, again, you would not long this for a value gap. Even if we pumped 100 points here, I would not long it, okay? Because we hit buy side. So if we just watch, okay, you can see, like on this candle there, okay? When we close below right here, this is when you could possibly take the retest, okay? And, and we know there's equal lows down here, so this could be a potential play, okay? Stop would be a close above here, whatever it is, so this would be your entry. Okay, so let's just see what happens. Again, uh, you would probably take partials here because it's 1R, and then your stop would just be a break even for the rest. Um, right here, I would probably take another short here. Okay. But I, I tricked you. I'm not actually going to take another short here, and this is a little more advanced. When we got to this point at the same time, okay, I know we have these equal lows here. But if we look at NQ at the same time, this is another lesson that is good kind of to know. If we look at NQ at the same time, um, let me see this here. Um, it's over here, I think. If we look at NQ at the same exact time at this situation, okay, it was right here. If I draw a vertical line, so I'm going to quickly draw a vertical line from... Um, at this fair value gap, and then it's this fair value gap. Okay. Now look where we were at this point. Okay, if I just keep playing this, okay, this is going to be very important to kind of note. Now look, 
if I draw a vertical line at this point, okay, at this point in time, what did I see? Okay, so if we go back in the replay mode, if I go to this, um, right here, okay, look where this vertical line is, okay, it's right, It's I drew it right here. At this time, we are inside this Fair Valley Gap, okay? And it looks like it gets short, and it looks like it's we're kind of stalling, so I was thinking about shorting this. But I looked at on Q, and what I see? I see this green candle burst through this Fair Valley Gap. And what I teach, or, or what ICT teaches is, if you ever see this, we could use this now as an inversion. And the thing is, you can also see we bounce off this Fair Valley Gap to the left too. So again, where do I, what do I say? Whenever we bounce off a fair valley gap, the drawn liquidity is always going to be the next high. So the fact that we bounced off this and totally disrespected this NNQ told me we were probably going higher and probably going back to the high NNQ, which we end up doing. So this is why, at the same time, I did not short this fair valley gap. And this is where I probably would have gotten out of the position if I shorted this, okay? Uh, but for shits and giggles, let's see if this ends up playing out. I think it does. Okay, no, we still have these equal lows below here. Right here, what do you notice? Okay, we, we have equal highs. And a, a lot of this stuff I am saying, by the way, guys, I did alert all this stuff in my Discord. I was mentioning this stuff. Okay, I'm not going to go prove it to you now. In the class last night, I kept going back in the index commentary. I kept going back in the chat and be like, oh, look, I said this, this, or, or I said this during this time. Okay, I'm not going to do that. It's going to just waste more time, and I... Do an amount of time constraint here. Anyways, now we see we leave equal highs. Okay, what does that tell me? That tells me we're going to go up there for FOMC. Okay, at this time, it gets, it's getting to 1230. We can see that we swept low of day. Okay, I don't really need on Q anymore. Um, you can see we swept both um, the low and high in NQ. Let me just turn this back on. Okay, so right here, we can see that equal lows ended up hitting. Um, and we also hit the low of day. So now that those both hit, would you short anymore? Absolutely not. And we've equal highs above here, so you'd obviously look for like a um a long or somewhere up here, right? So if we do this, ideally I'm just looking for long setup here, okay? And, and people in my chat would be like, okay, we're looking for long setup, and I was like. And I wasn't saying anything. I had no input. They were all saying by themselves, I'm looking for long. And I said, that's probably a good idea. Okay, we end up going back down into this old hourly fair value gap I had drawn here. Okay, so we, we went back down into this old fair value gap here. But did you see us hold it? Uh, yes, we did. So we never actually closed below it. We actually ended up holding it. Okay, now what do I say? A market structure shift can count as a as a as a push through an old fair value gap. So right here, I'm kind of seeing, are we getting a push through this? And we did. Okay, when we close through this fair value gap right here, it's kind of like, okay, this is could be counted as a market structure shift. This could count as a market structure shift. And the, reason, and the only reason I have confidence this does is because we're still holding that one hourly fair value gap, okay? And then we get a slight volume and balance here. This is where the guys in my Discord longed, okay? And I said, that was good long. Okay, so now when you long this, where were their targets? Their targets were here and here. And I mentioned, I'm like, okay, by the way, there are equal highs up here still, so those could be your next target as well. Um, and what happens? He he takes profit here, and then he moves a stop up. He moves a stop up to here. But what's wrong with that? If you look at the five-minute time frame, okay, this was actually a fair value gap. So because his entry was so good already, okay, because his entry was good already, Usually, if there's a fair value gap above your entry, I I do not move my stop loss and profit. I just keep my stop loss at break even. If, there, if there's a fair value gap like below your entry where I think we might hit, then then I'll move it to to break even or I'll move it up a little bit. But because it's a fair value gap, it's a really dumb place to put a stop loss just in case, just in case like we bounce off it then hit this high. And you can see this exactly what happened. Okay, so that's exactly what happened. Um, so. That's not ideal. And then right here was when I was like, I posted chat. I said like, oh, full, I, I texted my friend. I'm like, yo, full port. Like 
if you guys don't realize, okay, a lot of these like FOMC, CPI days, whatever, this is a good time to get a funded account and full port textbook setups when you know there's volatility coming in because that's how some of these guys pass, but you also have to have good discipline to, to pass when you get funded and get some withdrawals as well. Um, but these are good days to full port funded, so I'm not going to lie. Um, so, yeah. So, anyways, if you look... You can see the chart new before the news. I knew these equal highs are above here, and that was kind of my hunch we're gonna hit them, right? Now, what do we create off of this? We created one minute for a value gap. Okay, why? I don't usually take news for a value gaps, but in this situation, where's buy set on date on on yes? Okay, buy set is right here. Okay, so I knew buy side was up there, and the reason why I like that buy side so much is because. Above this was an unbalanced fair value gap. See how a lot of this was all unbalanced BPR? Okay, above that was a lot of still unbalanced BPR. So I was like, hmm, I bet you we could go go up into this still. Okay, and if you look at the one minute, this was not a bad spot to long with that reasoning. Okay, what happens? We go and rebalance this, and then we reject. But if we look at NQ at the same time, okay, if you look at NQ, the NQ weekly, if, if we go back to what I said before, okay, the NQ weekly chart, okay, remember what I say? If you ever see us bouncing off a fair value gap, even if you miss it in live time, okay, I'm sure a lot of you didn't catch this live time, you still know where the draw on liquidity is in hindsight, okay? You still know where the live draw on liquidity is, and it would be this high. And I saw at this time, okay, we did not hit the high yet. So if I go back to replay mode on NQ, okay, we did not hit this high yet, and I'm not going to prove it to you, but I could literally go back into my index commentary right now and say, oh, we're probably going to pop this high or whatever. I'm not going to do that. But basically what I said is when we got this wick, I'm like, okay, there's still no close under this fair value gap, which you have to pay attention to see if there's a strong close below or above. There's still no close below this fair value gap. So what I said is there's still a possibility we could go to this high. I said I wasn't super confident, but I said there was still a good possibility. Um, and... At this time in yes, you can see ES bounce off this fair value gap and we did hit buy side in yes, but usually before we get a big move down, I don't really prefer I would prefer NQ hitting this. It's just such such a major high. So I was like, okay, we're probably gonna take this high. I think I did take some executions on this. Um, they're not showing right now. Oh, it's because I'm on my live account. Um, yeah, I did execute this on my demo account, not my live account. Um, so that was nice um okay if we keep playing this okay what happens we end up hitting buy side what happens when we hit buy side we dump okay <coughs> and then if we play this on es right right here when we go under this low we still had not hit the buy side in nq so i was not fully i was being very very careful on shorting and then what do you see? You see an inverse fair value gap. We break over. So now you want to see this user support. Okay. Do we ever get a can to close under this when you want to see user support? Nope. Then what happens? This was the time when right here, if we look. Okay. Um... Sorry, my, oh, it's because I'm on the, oops, I'm on the wrong time frame. And then I was confused there for a second. Okay, if I go back to this real quick, I go to the one minute. So this is 1436. All right, this is 1436. So see this giant wick down? When we wick this down far on ES, okay, remember what I say? Whenever we get really close to sell side and don't hit it, you usually means we'll come back to it later. Okay, at this time, there is still untapped buy side and NQ. Okay, so if you draw like again the horizontal line, there's still I still knew there's untapped buy set and non Q. Okay, so right it was right here. Okay, this vertical line, and I still knew. Look, we're still not at this vertical line. Are we at buy set and non Q yet? Nope. So I was just waiting for that. And if if we didn't hit it, if we never end up hitting it, I never would have taken a play. I'm gonna be honest. Okay, but we did, so that's good. Again, you would not short this very value gap. Why? Because we know there's still untapped buy set or non Q. Again, I'm analyzing this in 3D, not 2D. I'm not just going to look at ES and make my position decision just based off of ES. I'm basing my decision off of other charts. Okay. Um, at this time, I'm not looking at DXY, but I think NQ was imperative to look at during this time. 
Okay, now this is 1449. If I zoom to 1449 here, now we hit buy side and then Q. So would you take this for your value cap on yes? Nope, because we also hit buy side on yes and we hit buy side on Q. So now what is when I was waiting for a short setup and the short setup did come better in the five minutes time frame. Okay, now I don't really need this. I just wanted to show you how I use NQ to not to know where we are going. Now, again, we hit this low. Now we hit this low. Okay, but now we have a fair VI gap. And if we know, if if I know on the daily time frame we're ejecting, this is a daily fair VI or daily VPR. If I know we're ejecting a bigger time frame, okay, usually this will still work. Okay, a lot of people are like, well, we hit sell side, so why would you short this? Okay, but I would I would still short this, and I did alert this short on my Discord. Okay, I'm not gonna again, I'm not gonna show you, there's no point. Um I did alert this short on my Discord, and I literally straight up alerted it, okay? Um, so you can see what happened is we end up rejecting going back down. The short that I alerted in live time was this very value gap right here. And if you look, okay, the 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 short position right here was this was going to be like the stop loss. This was way too much. So what I did is I waited for a confirmation setup, and I was like, okay, we got this tiny one for value gap now. You can see how the the risks are where now lowers. Okay, so this is the play I took. And again, if my bias is wrong, we would have bounced off this, but we didn't. Okay, so this is a good partial spot. And and again, what do I what I kind of teach, or what does ICT teach? You want to see when you go below this fair value gap that's in a discount array, you want to see us go under and you want to see this holder's resistance now. Okay, so you can see the stop loss if you took this short would be if a close back over. Do we ever get a close back over? Nope. Okay, so we never get a close back over, <coughs> um, which is obviously good. Okay, and then we just keep going down. So this is the final target. Do I care that we went lower? Nope, I followed my plan. This was my final target in Discord. Okay, I literally straight up alerted this. Okay, I'll, I'll show you the guys the alert, because why not? Um, it was right here, okay. So if you look, this is where I alerted it, right? Said so I'm shorting this in options, okay? Right when we got to that, that wick, I sent it, okay? I think it sent like a 20 seconds too low, but still could I got in. Um, and then I said scale half here, stop press to break even. And I was all out on options here because, again, I want to sell in the delta pump, but I said futures guys stay in. And I said futures guys get out here. Um, and I said, who banked? And, and it seems like I'm very excited here, but I was not really that excited because it's just a trade. You can't get excited during trades. You can't get mad during trades. I was just making sure everyone saw what I did. Okay, so you can see the final target hit. Um, and that was that. This was today. I did have a nice trade for today. I learned it as well. I said, in short, gonna see what happens. This was my play. You can see we end up hitting the target right here. Which is nice. And then I also predicted this earlier in in live voice, and I actually we did not have this move yet. We were only up here, and I predicted we were going to do this. And you can see we end up completing it. Okay, so that was pretty nice as well. Anyways, um, so yeah, that's kind of the gist of that I played the other day. And I just again, you had to, you kind of had to understand how I used NQ to know we were not done dumping yet in ES. Okay, because I saw we had not hit buy set in NQ yet, I wasn't really that confident we were going to dump it at ES. So I would not have, if we never hit buy set in NQ, I probably would just never would have taken a short. Um, but yeah, uh, that's all I got for this video. Um, I did review a lot of this for like 30 more minutes yesterday in, in chat or in my Discord, which people asked a lot of questions in, which I which went another 30 minutes. I really wish I could upload that recording, but I can't. So. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. There's, I, I did shorten this explanation up a little bit. If you have any other questions, make sure to DM me, reply to the YouTube, or D, DM me in Discord, whatever. Okay, so again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Other than that, uh, peace out.